Great football. Touchdown! A parade full of fun. They may be the first things that come to mind when you think about the Fiesta Bowl. But what about teachers? You got $5,000. How has it impacted your classroom? Schools in need and special athletes. It turns out the Fiesta Bowl scores some touchdowns there as well. I was so flattered by the, just the opportunity to do something with Fiesta Bowl and everything that they do for the community. Tonight, the bowl that is bigger than just a game and how it's not only promoting Arizona, it's helping make it a better place to live. Tonight, football, fun, and the spirit of giving on Politics Unplugged. Good evening, I'm political editor Dennis Welch, and this is a special Thanksgiving weekend Politics Unplugged. And with us today are Mike Neely with the Fiesta Bowl director and Steve Leach, Fiesta Bowl chairman of the board, to tell us a little bit more about the Fiesta Bowl and the many ways it is giving back to Arizona and the Valley. Thank you, gentlemen, both for being here. But before we dive into that, Thanksgiving weekend is traditionally a big football weekend. So let's start off with the upcoming Fiesta Bowl game itself. When is it this year? And, uh, you know, what teams are projected to be there? Uh, since you guys aren't fortunate enough to have my six and five Iowa Hawkeyes, <laughs> probably not going to be making it to the big game. Not this year. Not yeah. this year. Keep keep the hope up. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I have more hope on my Minnesota Gophers, yeah. which I think I have a little bit longer to wait. But, uh, no, we're excited. It's an, another year. Fiesta Bowl is rolling around quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. Saturday, uh, December 30th. Two o'clock, we're going to roll out another game, and uh, we're excited to have it. Okay, and when do we find out what the teams are? You will Typical. find out. The Any projections right now, too? I mean, a lot, there's lots of stuff out there I see on ESPN and Sports <laughs> Illustrated. I mean, who's being projected to uh, come here I this think, year? You know, Notre Dame's a possibility. Wow. A lot of football yet to be played, of course, but Notre Dame's a possibility. USC is a Stay possibility. Outside. Ohio yeah. State. This year's Rose Bowl isn't a traditional Rose Bowl. It's a semifinal, so yeah. they're not going to have the Big Ten Pac-12 sure. matchup. There's some thought that we might get that. Yeah, and so uh, the Fiesta Bowl, uh, not a champion again, not a championship game this year. Correct. We uh, we now we are in the college football mm -hmm. playoff system, so we are rotating the, the playoffs every three years. We get to host the playoff game. Okay. So we're very excited about that. We had that last year, so uh, we'll wait another three years and be able to host another playoff game and. Um, that's the, under the new system. That, that may be something to talk about a little bit. You know, there has been a change. The BCS, I, I think the community is used to having that BCS rotation where you had the championship game mm -hmm. here every four years. Uh, when the playoff system came aboard, um, as part of the New Year's, six, New Year's Six Bowl games, which we are now one of them, we just rotate the semifinal game. Yeah. And for those maybe not familiar, how are these teams selected to come here? Do you guys play a role in that? Do you guys lobby for certain teams? Because we all know that the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, their their fans sure. are pretty fanatical right. and will travel. And uh, some other teams obviously are known for not traveling, which means maybe yeah. a little bit of less out of town money comes to the well, We used to have a lot more control over that. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, uh, the Fiesta Bowl would go out and kind of make up its own matches. Uh, traditionally, that's one of the reasons the Fiesta Bowl grew so quickly, mm -hmm. because they went out and got one versus two and created sort of championships mm -hmm. where they didn't used to exist. Now, in the CFP process that Mike was mentioning, we've got, they have a selection committee consisting of former coaches, former athletic directors, mm -hmm. current athletic directors, media folks, and they go ahead and seed, they'll pick the top 12 teams, mm -hmm. and they'll seed them starting with one through four in the semifinals, and then they'll put together the, bowl, the other bowls after that. Okay, and obviously a lot of events surrounding the big game, and uh, one of the biggest ones, obviously, is the parade. So Certainly. when are we looking at the parade, What's uh, w and what's uh, special about it this year? Yeah, well, we're, we're packing the parade. That'll be the same day as the game. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll have an early morning parade right down Central Avenue here, and uh, we're excited to have a grand marshal this year and Shane Doan, yes. you know, a community uh, favorite, of course, announced his retirement this year from hockey after... Mm -hmm. uh, 20 plus years of, of leading the Coyotes in the Valley and you know one of the reasons that we selected him was really more for the things that he did for the community obviously we we are a community uh, organization we give back to the community and I'm sure we'll talk more about that but uh, Shane don't fit well within uh, that type of a community person and we were excited to have him all right well, let's talk a little bit more about yeah. Shane Doan here in just a second but I do have to plug the fact that you can see the entire oh, parade right here absolutely on three TV yeah. so like uh, you know again you mentioned the Grand Marshal Shane Doan is going to be uh, leading up that parade sort of a reunion for you Mike right 
It, it is a little bit. Let me, let me go back and plug your Channel 3 here. You guys have done a wonderful job. This is the third year that Channel oh, 3 will you. be doing it. So I, I'm, I'm not just saying that. I, I, we've had a great partnership, and it's, it's been a great uh, couple of years, and, and we're looking forward to this year. But yeah, Shane Doan, my previous life before the bowl was at the Phoenix Coyotes at the time, was the Phoenix Coyotes. And so I got to know Shane Doan and work with him quite a bit and, and get to know him and get to know him as a player, but also get to know him as, as a man yeah, and, listen, and a family person. I, I want to play a sound bite from him because he was just yeah. recently talking about the Fiesta Bowl, what it means to sure. him, and we can. Uh, let our listeners take a listen right now. Sure. Mike Neely uh, called and asked and if I was interested and I was so flattered by the, just the opportunity to do something with Fiesta Bowl and everything that they do for the community and the way they support it was, it was a pretty, it was a no-brainer and uh, I jumped at the opportunity. Like, sounded like you really had to twist his arm to be <laughs> part of this one right there. Like, he, you know, well, how long did it take? That was as genuine as the guy <laughs> is, and he, I uh, know, he was honored to do it, and he had, he had to do some juggling around with his schedule, um, mm -hmm. you know, which is like him to, to do that. He, he did what he could to try to join us, and he, he made it work, and we're excited to have him. All right, and tell us a little bit something, too, um, you know, more about the charitable organization side of the Fiesta Bowl. I think maybe some people know that you guys do some charities, but maybe not specifically what you guys actually do. Well, we, um, you know, we've always thought of ourselves as a community organization. It was created by some community leaders who came together to, to start a bowl game, to bring economic impact and entertainment into the Valley. And, and we realized as it grew that while we were serving lots of parts of the community, one part we weren't serving all that well maybe, mm -hmm. were some of the folks who were less fortunate because going to a football game isn't probably on your radar screen mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're struggling. And so we developed festival charities. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we use the games and our other events as economic generators. Mm -hmm. Anytime someone in the community purchases a ticket, becomes a sponsor, gets involved that way, some of what you're investing in our organization is going to go to festival charities because we are a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. After we cover our costs, the remainder goes to our festival charities. And then uh, through a very robust grant process this year, we're going to give $2.5 million dollars Mm -hmm. to over 60 yeah. charities across the state and that's the most we've ever given most any other bowl games. Yeah, game. I want to play a soundbite here because a few months ago you guys held a charitable uh, a rally over at uh, mm -hmm. uh, Camp Birdie High School in Gilbert to announce a record-breaking charitable give. I want to play that soundbite right now. Mike Neely joining us. Give us the big amount, sir. Two and a half million dollars going to go to charities this year. So very excited. Big announcement. Kids are jazzed up. We got Be Kind here doing a wonderful job getting them going. But it's a big day for us because we're proud to be able to give back two and a half million dollars to the community. And ex explain to us where some of that money is going to be going again. Well, there's about 60 charities or plus uh, that will be going to, and a lot of it will be going to teachers. And, and that's a, a big chunk. And we know we, our, our three pillars are youth, sports, and mm -hmm. education. And education is important. I think we, we talk a lot about that within our communities here. And we know that education could probably use a boost in the arm in Arizona. And, and we talked about what we could do. And a big piece of what we did, we allocated over $500,000 yeah. to go right to teachers. And we're going to talk a lot more about the education yeah. mm -hmm. element Great. and component about that in the next segment. But, okay. uh, you know, one yeah. other thing, one, one other you know question i got to address, too, the elephant in the room. Obviously, you guys still six years removed from a big scandal yep. uh, yeah. with the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. Um, this was a pretty nasty one we're talking mm -hmm. about, you mm -hmm. know, cover-ups. We're talking about illegal embezzlement and and, pay, and, 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 and camp, illegal campaign contributions to politicians. Is that something, a hurdle you guys are still dealing with? I think know? not. Matter of fact, I, I've just met with some folks involved in uh, high-level college football, and, and mm -hmm. I think the feeling is that we did what we had to do there, which was completely redo the organization. And we have a governance system, checks and balances, that we're very proud of. We think it's the best in the nation of any bowl game. And uh, so what happened before camp? happen. Uh, we've got great people of integrity like Mike and, and others in our organization who won't allow it to happen. The board of directors isn't. And uh, I think we've, we've, we've convinced people both locally and nationally that we're a different organization. And uh, so it, it was a very difficult time, but I think we got through it. And there's some people that committed a great deal of effort to making sure that we got through it. And we, we owe them Mm -hmm. A lot. And what was that like to go through something like that, to come in after these types of scandals well, yeah, uh, and take over an organization like yeah, that? Yeah, it's a good, uh, good point because I, I was not a part of the organization when it happened, so I have a different perspective in that, you know, I, I saw it happen from, from afar. And, you know, according, you know we, we, I like to refer to it as our parking incident that we had. Mm -hmm. But we, we got through that, and, and as Steve mentioned, you know, I, I have to give a lot of credit to the board that was in place. You know, I, I think we uh, got surprised and some things happened, but I think the, the board really took responsibility and, and, and and opened up the uh, the information, directed what needed to be directed, and and put things in place that really now is a model. We have people still calling, asking, 
How do you, how do you set up your governance? How, how can I copy that? What are you doing there? I was very fortunate and, and proud to be able to step in after the issue. Um, I like to think that was brought in for some of the skill sets that I had in, in going through. If you remember, mm -hmm. I went through some things with the coyotes and the, the, the bankruptcies and some issues here and um, you know maybe some integrity issues there. But um, and even just this year, the, the organization, you know, through an integrity conference, we were asked to participate and, and I spoke at an integrity conference you know a, as representing a high integrity company so that that's how far we've come and that I think we're a model out there for what we're doing all right very well we're gonna have to take a quick break here we do have more to come here on politics unplug more about the Fiesta Bowl just ahead you know the big game is all about college football but the Fiesta Bowl itself is doing lots to help kids prepare for college and as our Kylie Cruz found out that includes helping teachers. We are here inside Miss Gallo's classroom, an eighth grade science class at Stetson Hills, and she was one of the teachers who benefited last year from the Fiesta Bowl Charities and the Wishes for Teachers program. You got $5,000. How has it impacted your classroom? Um, it's impacted us in a huge way. Um, one of the things that you can see is that we have the synthetic blood typing lab, which is a hands-on blood lab that we didn't have access to in previous years. Um, when I took over this class, about two and a half years ago we really were missing a lot of supplies um, so it was a really huge blessing to have the money from the Fiesta Bowl because we were able to um, get a lot more things for experiments tangibles realia which um, I think really just impacts our students not only in their time in my classroom but also when they grow up and have access to science and stem careers definitely inspiring young scientists we want to bring in Jose Moreno he is with the Fiesta Bowl charities to talk about next year so our goal is to be able to push this out to teachers across the state K through 12 if you're a public or charter school educator we want to serve you and we want to hopefully give out a million dollars this year we're gonna match up to a half a million dollars to our wishes for teachers program I'm Kylie Cruz more with the Fiesta Bowl here on politics unplugged is just straight ahead Tracking some breaking news on this Wednesday night coming out of Sky Harbor Airport. I don't want to talk to you. Well, I want to talk to you. What does a U.S. passport cost down here? One lawmaker is coming forward to name names. Dennis, this could have some long term ramifications. This year, don't just celebrate Christmas, make it a Learner in a Row Christmas. And a happy Hanukkah. Go to our Learner in a Row Facebook page, tell us what you want, and you just may get it. Learner in a Row is the way to go. Call 977 Medicare open enrollment ends December 7th, so it's time to talk to Cigna, where our one priority is you. We want to help you choose a Medicare Advantage plan now that fits your needs. Cigna Plus You means our plans are designed around you with an approach to health care led by your doctor. Call Cigna now to learn about your options and get a free guide. There's no obligation. Cigna puts you first with plans that offer no monthly premiums, no primary doctor co-pays, prescription drug coverage, even dental and vision services. With a Medicare Advantage plan from Cigna, you'll enjoy one more advantage. A focus on preventive care designed to help you stay healthy. Open enrollment ends December 7th. Don't wait. Choose a partner that puts you first. Cigna. Call 1-800-331-1995. That's 1-800-331-1995. Cigna. Together, all the way. Thanks for letting us come into your home each week. We pray for you, and we're believing that you're going to see God's goodness in amazing ways. Stand still, and you'll see God deliver you. When you remain at rest, Almighty God fights your battles. Everybody around you is going to have no doubt the God you serve is an awesome God. I promise you this. Every time you turn us on, we're going to try to inspire you, to challenge you, to help you become all God's created you to be. This year, don't just celebrate Christmas, make it a Learner in a Row Christmas. And a happy Hanukkah. Go to our Learner in a Row Facebook page, tell us what you want, and you just may get it. Learner in a Row is the way to go. Call 977 
And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. And with us today are Mike Neely, Fiesta Bowl Executive Director, and Steve Leach, Fiesta Bowl Chairman of the Board. So we saw a little bit about the Wishes for Teachers program before the break. Tell us a little bit more about it. Applications are already closed this year, but how does this program actually work, guys? Well, we off opened it up to uh, educators across the state, uh, public charter schools, and, and just they can apply and, and kind of say, what would your wish be if you were given $5,000 for your classroom? Mm -hmm. What would you do with it? And we almost doubled, I think, Mike. Oh, oh, we're over 4,000 applications yeah. this year. We did, and it's just an awesome program. We, we started it last year, and then we started kind of late and thought it was a good idea and rolled it out. And, and with great success last year, and a lot of teachers found out about it, read word of mouth, and applied. This year, over 4,200 teachers uh, took advantage of a very quick application and basically our ask of, what would you do with $5,000? Um, we went out, we, we committed $500,000 of our money, hoping to match. We're, we're north of $750,000 now. It's not too late to, to donate, of course, because there's always teachers out there in need. But the biggest, the, the really neat p part about this program is we asked the teachers what they wanted. Yeah. And $5,000 is a big chunk of money to help a teacher in a classroom. And the teachers are wonderful. They're out there, you know, front lines and usually, and oftentimes taking money out of their own pockets for things. And the th types of things that we see that they, they want to do for their kids is wonderful. And obviously we're taking a little bit of a break from politics here on the show mm -hmm. as we're uh, talking more about the Fiesta Bowl today. But we, you know, we've had a lot of people here at this table talk about education sure. and the state of education in Arizona. And it is a political hot button issue. Mm -hmm. What do you guys hear from teachers? Because many teachers right now, we are, you're feeling underappreciated. Many feel they are underpaid. Many are leaving the profession. Right. We hear yeah. a lot of school districts where there's teacher shortages. What do you guys hear from these teachers who are, you know, uh, that are, uh, you know, asking for for, for these uh, donations. Well, I think one thing that we hear is is not just that they appreciate the money, but mm -hmm. they appreciate the appreciation. <laughs> they appreciate that com yeah. that community. I, I'm not surprised by yeah, that. I guess. Yeah, yeah, because in a community organization like the Fiesta Bowl, which is I think pretty well known across the state, is bothered to team up with other community leaders yeah. and create this, and then say to them, as Mike said, "What do you want?" We, and then we draw. Then it's mm -hmm. random. Draw it out of. Uh, we don't use a hat. We use an apple, mm -hmm. and say, "Okay, you won. We have some fun with it." But then they, I think it's that. Okay, I, not only do I get to add to my classroom, but I now appreciate that there's other folks out there who care what I'm doing and trying to. Is there build. more competition yeah. for this money now because of you know the, the things we are hearing about, reading about with the Arizona education? Well, are you seeing more uh, you know applications yeah, being filed? Absolutely, you know, and, and the, the appreciation word you know that, that you mentioned that and we highlighted mm -hmm. that is the reason. That's what, one thing that we thought we could provide for them. Uh, we had maybe 1,200 applicants last year and over 4,200. Uh, I'm sorry, about 2,000 last year and, and over 4,200 this year. So that tells you the need is there, and and we know that we're not going to solve the education issue here. You know, sure. we, we we wanted to step forward, show our appreciation. In addition to the, the grants that we're doing and, and the, those teachers that are going to get that $5,000 grant, we're also hosting them at one of our games and bringing them down in the field and, and, and just showing them that, hey, thank you, we appreciate it. Uh, you know, we know that $5,000 is a lot of money. It's going to help their classroom. It's not going to solve all their issues, but hopefully uh, they're, they're, they feel thanked and appreciated. And, and it, maybe it'll keep one of those teachers here that's, that, you know, because we know we're, we're losing teachers, you know, and, and um, it's one of the issues that we have. But if we can keep a teacher happy and keep them in the state, that's good for us. Yeah, I can't imagine like you were dealing with this, you know, 20 years ago. Right. It, was a different, it, it, it was a different time, but now we're just seeing so many teachers leaving the profession. Well, that's one of the segue back to, we talked a little bit about the parade, uh, the uh, National Bank of Arizona Fiesta Bowl Parade, which is coming up. We just announced early this morning on, on Channel 3 TV, one of our honorary grand marshals, is the teacher of the year, Josh Mibus. So it's another way to say, you know, he's a representative for everybody out there who's working to build up our future as a state. All right, and uh, you know, what other kind of programs do you guys do for kids? Obviously, the schools are very important, but outside of schools, what are you guys doing? Sure, uh, we, we have a youth football program that's free to, to youth, and we uh, are able to help a lot of kids that otherwise probably wouldn't be able to afford a, a football camp. So mm -hmm. a youth football camp, we, we do that. We have uh, other, you know, and through many of the, the nonprofits that we work with, uh, we, we, that we give money to, through them, we allow them to do what they do best. And that's a big part of what we do, too. I mean, besides, you know, uh, our direct give to the teachers, that other $2, $2 million plus money that we give out, we go through a process and make sure that we're giving it to 
good organizations throughout the orga throughout our community that know what they're doing and help the community yeah, do what they do. And tell us, you know, your opinion on how this makes a difference in a child's life, and also too, if somebody's watching this and you know they want to take advantage of some of this, this the programs you do, how do, how do they go about doing that? Well, first of all, just by being part of the Fiestable family, if you come out and buy a ticket to a game, uh, if your company or you individually want to sponsor some aspect of the Fiestable, the, you're going to have that direct impact. And what we hear is that it's it's incredible, and we've all had the chance to put on the yellow jacket and go in front of some school groups and just like we said with teachers I think they they like the fact that they're being recognized and appreciated and that people care enough to come to them help their programs um, you know one of the things one of the uh, programs that we do is the Honeywell Aerospace Challenge where we have six person teams I think it's fifth through eighth grade who come in from all over the state and present a science project on creating a colony on another planet mm -hmm. and they get judged by some pretty high level engineers and there's a whole different category of student that and if you win you're going to the space camp the NASA space camp so we try to serve as many different areas and as Mike said a lot of the the nonprofits that we give money to they're experts at serving youth and education and so we give them the money and they get to do what they do sure, best. And you guys also have a program serving meals to folks. Tell me how many people this is affecting and, 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 and what this is all about. Sure, on several different fronts we will do that. We will support organizations that actually do that. Actually even this morning, this morning uh, many of us had jeans on. We were out at uh, the, the food bank this morning giving away turkeys. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it's, you know, as, as great as it is to feel good about doing things like that, that, that opens up your eyes and you know that that need is out there. But besides it's the direct gifts that we are able to do. and. Um, but giving money to those organizations that, that do the good things is, is also a possibility. So if, if one thing, if, if somebody doesn't know, one message that we'd love to give is that we are a nonprofit. Yes, buy our tickets and enjoy that event and things, but at the end of the day, know that at least some of that money, after our expenses get paid, we're, we're looking to give that back to the community. All right, and there's another really neat thing that we see. It's not just hometown athletes or volunteers who get in on the ACT players. For the visiting teams also just jump right in and we have some video of Clemson athletes with Special Olympians and Ohio State players helping rehab in the Valleys in at Valley School while we look at that to talk uh, talk us a little talk to us a little bit about getting these teams on board. Well they love it and I, I, I was lucky enough to, to be one of the team hosts for Ohio State last year and you know they sent as many of our programs do they send down sp starters and these kids want to be there they decide to be there they kind of argue about who gets to do it and uh, it gives them a chance to get back to the community. We had fun. The school we went to, one of their team colors is blue, which is not the favorite color for Ohio State players because that reminds them of Michigan, and they got their hands covered in blue, and we had to go back and tell Urban Meyer they weren't changing teams. They were really working hard at a school, but they had a great time. Uh, all of our teams get involved in some community project one, one way or the other, and, and they just do a wonderful job of, of making an imprint that, that is a permanent imprint on our community. Now, anything new on the charitable front this year that we're going to see for the first time? For the first time? Well, I don't know, Steve, what do you think? Well, I, I'm I, I'm I you, wonder if we're, we're at 2.5 million, yeah, which is well yeah, more than we've done before, more than any other uh, organization. We're growing wishes for teachers. I think it's new that almost every year uh, we are always reaching new nonprofits. Okay. So we don't continue to give back to the same. We like to spread it around and get, let different nonprofits experience and, and grow from the support we can give them. What you, right. what you will see, you probably see, will see in the coming year, you know, we're always looking at doing new events, new opportunities mm -hmm. that will allow us to make additional funds that we can give back. So be looking for different new events that we're being involved with. All right. Well, it's all time for this segment. We're going to have to take a quick break. But we have more festival fun just ahead on Politics Unplugged, where I'm going to ask these guys how I can get one of these sweet yellow jackets. <laughs> all right. Hey. Diamonds at their lowest price in years. Half carat solitaires are now three ninety nine. One carat seven ninety. Two carat nine fifty per carat plus one carat studs three ninety nine. Insane prices on thousands of GIA diamonds and designer rings. Buy direct. The Jewelry Exchange Phoenix. I used to think people who complained about whiplash were full of it. Then it happened to me. The other car came out of nowhere and wham! My neck and lower back ache non-stop. Look, I hate going to doctors, but emergency chiropractic was great. Straightforward and no nonsense. They even waited for my claim to settle. Best call I ever made. Emergency chiropractic, the kind of care you want today. Buckle up. Can't miss outdoor moments. They all begin at the same destination. Start yours at Cabela's Black Friday Weekend Sale. 
Come in and save 25% on select North Face clothing and on Sorrel footwear for the family. Shop in-store and online. Melvin, uh, you know what you're doing? I almost got your dream clear. <laughs> Melvin, what a character. Call Parker & Sons for all your cooling, heating, plumbing, and drain cleaning needs. You know you can count on us to be there quick and do great work at a fair price. And I promise there'll be no Melvins on your job. Call 602 to repair to get it done. The all-new Chapman Ford is now open. It's our biggest grand opening event ever. Right off the 101 on Indian School Road. The all-new Chapman Ford in the Scottsdale Auto Show. The perfect gift. One carat three stone and halo rings, six ninety nine. One carat foreverist rings are just nine ninety. Diamond bands, two forty nine to three thirty nine per carat. Diamond studs are three ninety nine per carat. Thousands of gifts guaranteed to appraise for double. The Jewelry Exchange Phoenix. The Ford Year in Sales event is here. Okay. We're gonna find a spot. Yeah, we'll find a spot. Really good. Yeah, I, you did. They're behind me. Here I am. Did the Fusion just do that? Fusion just stopped on its own. Well, that's Ford, America's best-selling brand. Hurry in for 0% financing for 72 months across a full lineup of Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. Just announced, now lease a new Fusion for only $1.99 a month for 36 months with zero due at signing. Hurry into your desert Ford dealers today. And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. More Fiesta Bowl with Executive Director Mike Neely and Chairman Steve Leach. You now we talked about how much uh, the Fiesta Bowl donates. What are some of the other events you guys do to raise money? I understand that there is a par three challenge out mm -hmm. there. Uh, people love golf, right? Absolutely. We, we had a long-standing hole-in-one uh, challenge event that we changed this year and did a very unique par three challenge, which had tremendous prizes on many of the holes. Mm -hmm. And um, also, you could also win a million dollars ultimately if, if you. Uh, uh, qualified during the event and and, we, and that looks like some Arizona family people right there that oh, took part absolutely. in that this year right that's right uh, Scott did quite well and matter of fact uh, won a prize for the charity of his choice I'm not surprised by that I'm not surprised He's a golfer. at all yeah. I'm not surprised. so how much money did we raised this year uh, that did pretty well I'm not sure we've got all the numbers we, in we, yet because yeah, that we was only about hundred thousand dollars yeah. and you know and, well, the, the net amount will be a little bit less than that but we uh, had a great event there we had two people that hit a hole in one during the event and so they won some prizes and so that's that's what we want people to have out there have fun and uh, uh, contribute to charity and so how, how do people uh, you know watching this if they want to get involved with fiesta bowl charities uh, events in the future how do they do that well fiesta is yeah. our is our website so you can go there and you'll have a whole host of information that's it's pretty yeah. easy to navigate and there's a whole bunch of information okay. and what kind of things can they do what kind of skill sets are you guys looking for oh anything uh we have the largest volunteer base of any organization uh, football organization over 3,000 folks so you can work parades you can work games you can work you know the pre-game parties and then during the year you can volunteer for other things our main volunteer group is our what we call the yellow jacket committee about 125 to 30 uh, leaders in the community who are lucky enough to get to wear these beautiful yellow jackets and represent our our organization in the community uh, and they and if you're interested in that you can go on the fiesta.org website, especially even around January, February, and there'll be an application you can fill out. All right, and uh, we got about a minute left, so that's the important question. I think people who uh, watch the entire show here see the Fiesta Bowl <laughs> folks every year. They're always wondering, how can I get one of those sweet yellow blazers? Well, Steve tickled that a little bit, and we do have an application process. You can go to the website at fiestabowl.org, and you can see that, that uh, uh, application when we get into January, February time frame. We're looking for people that want that can give up their time, that want to be part of the organization, not only volunteer time, but also the resources, and do some fundraising for us as well. So there's a yeah. qualification process, and um, we'd love so, to have so, some more so men and women. So basically, the jacket's free as long as you do what? <laughs> as, long as, long as, as long as you <laughs> raise enough money, as long as you participate enough. Matter of fact, we just had some of our new mer members win their yellow jackets at our most frequent committee meetings so it's a lot of fun we have a good time doing it but everybody's joined together to you know to make a better organization and a better Arizona community All right. and, and a thank you to this community I mean we, yeah. we as, as a bowl have a lot of volunteers yeah. this community is, is huge in volunteerism and we appreciate it all right and thank you guys for joining us but that is all the time we have tonight thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week for more politics unplugged